Well, hello, everyone. Um, today's topic is going to be forgiveness. It's a big topic. It's an important topic because with forgiveness, we can develop much greater levels of peace than we might think of otherwise. But forgiveness is, you know, not something you wave your hand at and just do. Okay. So I have my guest today is Hella Gilling. Hella, say hello. Hi, everybody. Okay. And Hella is one of our advanced students, uh, one of our certification students, and has been at this for quite a while. And on the topic of forgiveness, she has uh, developed her own idea that's been useful for some people. And so she's going to talk about that, and then we're going to enter into other ways of doing this and unfold for you, which should be, if you stay here clear to the end, it should give you a lot of tips and pointers. So Hella, if you would. Talk about the forgiveness issue, how you address it. Go ahead. Okay. So this is uh, not my idea. Actually, that's Unseen Therapist's idea. We, uh, in the beginning of this, the summer this year, I was working with a client who just could not forgive this woman that he felt had wronged him. And no matter what we did, it just didn't work. And so as I always do, we go in and say, Unseen Therapist, what do you think, you know? Let, let's see what she has to say. And then she brought in this idea of having of having the, my client bring in the woman that he couldn't forgive along with unseen therapist. So there would be the woman, my client, and unseen therapist. And then she you mean, would... Excuse me. You mean to do this in, in the imagination? Yes, in the imagination. Okay. Yes, right. yes, absolutely. So... so uh, so my client would then imagine, with unseen therapist's help, imagine the woman apologizing and saying, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I was such a jerk. I shouldn't have done it. I never meant to hurt you, and that's not my, that wasn't my intention at all. And then his job was to actually accept the apology. And that I, that's actually a big stumble block for some people, the actual accepting because once you accept the apology, well, then you kind of have to let go of the resentment. And so, so you accept the apology, and that kind of automatically forgives the other person. And so I told him to go in and do this, and then he came out of it, and he was just laughing and crying and smiling. He's like, oh, my God. And he was, you know, very excited and very relieved. It was like the issue was gone. And I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if, you know, as I took my notes and I wonder if this would be useful for other people. And so I tried it with other clients to see how that would work. And everybody said, I never thought of that. And I never thought about it either. So I know it wasn't my idea because it's never occurred to me to do that. And so I worked with other clients, including some who had, you know, we're talking about the real uh, severe violence from early childhood and they were somehow able to go in and receive the apology and then be at peace with that issue. So it's, it is a step in the direction towards peace, but a lot of people that I work with are not spiritually savvy. They don't know anything about the Course in Miracles. They don't know anything about optimal EFT or regular EFT for that matter. They just know that they hate that bastard in their terms. And they just can't, uh, they just, they want to wring his neck. You know, they have all these feelings. And talking about forgiveness without an apology is, is just not, I mean, it, it just, it's not practical. It's not sure. practical. Sure. And then once we have gotten to that level, and if it's long-term clients, which most of my clients are, then we can start to, after a little while, then we start to work on trying to understand, well, what would make a person like that act that way? And then it's kind of, so we've taken a big step, then now a piece, it's not an issue that blocks everything else, so then we can proceed from there on. Yeah, the, I, the idea, the idea of, gee, what's, What's behind why this person behaved in this way? Yes. That longer, as you're, as you're talking about, that longer term is where we want to get, want to, get to eventually. Now, yes. let, me, let me back up a second here. Um, 
the the idea that you're having is is one where their their ego, their, your clients' ego now feels better. Oh, this person, in the imagination at least, is saying, "Oh, I'm sorry, I've been a jerk." To use your terms, and and so on. Shame on me. And I hear it. I am on bended knee in a way, saying, "Forgive me, forgive me." Yes. And so the the client says, "Ah, okay, I forgive you." And so they feel better about it. And now they can move on with other things you want to do in this, in their session. I, I've got that right. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Ultimately though, and I'm just paraphrasing what you're saying, because I want to emphasize it. Um, ultimately though, we, we, that, that has a, um, there's a piece to that, that if, if it's going to be a long-term client, we probably need to shift a little bit because that's, that really plugs into the ego where their ego now says, okay, I am the, I am the big one here, the superior one. You are the small one. And so you are now helping my, my ego feels better. And so we can be friends or I, I feel better about it. And we can, can move on better longer term to understand where that person's coming from. Why would they do one of the things I do, Hella, in, in this thing is I would say, well, one thing we're not going to be doing here is I talk with my client is we're not going to, and this is in a more advanced way. Okay. We're not going to excuse the behavior. Okay. Many people think if you're going to forgive, that means you've got to say the behavior is okay. No, that's not what we're doing here. We're not going to excuse the behavior. We are going to understand it. And that's a good step towards complete forgiveness where we don't even care if it happened. Okay. So we can start asking, well, why would they behave that way? And as we go into this, chances are pretty good that somewhere along the line in their childhood, typically, they've been abused, they've been rejected. Uh, you know, they've been, they've been insulted. They've been even sexually abused and all kinds of things may have happened. They have unrest within themselves like we all do. Okay. <laughs> you and I Hella, are not <laughs> exempt from that. And neither is anybody listening. We right. have, un we have unrest within ourselves, which we need to do something with. And to the extent we have not created peace with that yet, complete peace with that yet. Um, we got to do something with that unrest. And so we behave, we behave in various ways and that are insulting and rejecting and they, people are projecting out their stuff and their angers and everything else. And other people then begin to resenting it. It's a one big loop of things that goes on. So I guess the, the task before us is, um, how would we go go about moving from this temporarily valuable way of in the imagination having the client say "I'm sorry," I'm, or the, excuse me, the have the client have the other person say "I'm sorry," "I'm sorry," "I'm sorry," to this grander, larger, eventually more important view. We've talked about that a little bit. And we, you and I previously just talked about a a baby issue. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give me your thoughts about that. Well, the, the baby issue is a very beautiful metaphor for, for, for dealing with it. And I like it a lot where you you look at that baby, the perpetrator, as, as a baby and that baby is talking about that yes i'm gonna I, I try to make everything i do i try to you know make it a little funny so we can laugh a little be a little lighter so i so i say well this baby is is going to be making some mistakes we all know baby's going to burp it's going to you know poop all over you it's going to spill milk it's going to do all these mistakes and as the baby grows older I'm also going to make bigger mistakes. 
and I'm going to be making maybe some mistakes that seem unforgivable, but please forgive me already for the burping, for the spilling the milk, and forgive me for what other mistakes that I may. I do not intend any harm. I do not intend anything, but I know that life may shift me out of the loving state I'm in right now, and I may do other things. Yeah, sure. It's a, It's like the the baby, this is my view of it, the, ba- the baby is one who has not yet learned how it's, it needs to compete in this world, okay? The baby is yeah. just there, and it is, in its beginning, a very, very innocent. Yeah, it's got needs and all that kind of stuff, and it cries, whatever, but it's very innocent in, in all of that. And we, we understand why baby cries, because baby's hungry, doesn't know what else to do. And so on. But time goes on and and baby interfaces with the world and then they get all these resentments and other stuff, like unrest and, and stuff that, that comes about. But if we can see them as that baby and recognize that their current behaviors is a result of all the experiences they've had in their lives, the insults, the rejections and the abuses and whatever else may have occurred. Ah, we can stand back from this and have more understanding about it. We can be lighter about it. That's not one ego being bigger than the other ego, okay? Uh, the client being superior to the to the groveling, sorry, perpetrator. Instead, it's more of a, ah, equal, because we're both, you were you were a baby, I was a baby, so is the perpetrator a baby. And so on. we can see it in that fashion. Softer, softer. That brings me to a little point here. I don't think it's something you and I discussed, but it's, it's, um, it's on point here. So let me just get your view of it. This actually comes from my own spiritual reading, which is A Course in Miracles. It brings about this idea and it fits in with forgiveness. Everybody is either exhibiting love or they're calling for love. Yes. Yeah. And understanding that, really getting to under, really getting to understand that we can see where the perpetrator is calling for love and we see that we do that ourselves when we're doing, you know, <laughs> People resent right. us. Yeah. People resent us yeah. too for whatever we did, even though we may think it was proper, whatever. But people, when see if we see somebody, the the perpetrator as calling for love. Yes, they stole something. Yes, they injured something. Yes, they gossiped. Yes, they did whatever they did. These are ways of calling for love. Yes. Again, it's not excusing the behavior, but it's a softer approach for me, the person who wants to be more forgiving and have more peace. Give me your thoughts on that. Absolutely. And that's where I would bring in the love sponge because oh, the, the love sponge, that's another metaphor, right? Yes. The, yeah. the love sponge. Yes. Where, where you are, Filling up, unseen therapist fills you up with love first, filling your sponge. And then you imagine yourself, the person you're trying to forgive with a sponge that's most likely dry as a bone and crusty. But then you radiate that love to them. So they start to feel their love sponge expanding and filling up love. So you have love you are giving love to them. The more love they have, they start to radiate back to you. And then it becomes this loop where you're just sending love to each other. Yes. Now that's a nice, and I find very useful way to approach this, but it's like you said earlier on, it's not really for everyone where they are at that moment. Exactly. After a while, you, you spend more time with the client, you bring in more concepts. And then this kind of idea begins to, Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. But there are 
steps along the way. So anyway, anyway, anything else that you want to mention on forgiveness uh, while we're here? Well, one of the things that that is that I find very important is that, you know, so we start out saying, oh, the perpetrator apologizes and the other one says, I accept your apology. And so we're kind of, you know, a debt paid off kind of. And if I can keep working with the clients, then we try to look at, like we talked about, that the perpetrator did not get loved, get treated properly, but also that you, the client, have some traits in you that under certain circumstances you could do some not very nice things that we all have this like uh, like the concentration camp kind of issue we all have some aspect of like a mini hitler in us under the worst circumstances we could all do terrible things so that we begin to see yeah, well, so maybe I'm not all good and maybe they're not all bad. So we try to, you know, have the two opposing sides approach. And so we're more one. I can see you had some bad things. Well, actually, I have some bad stuff in me, too. And well, you got some love. Now I got some love. So we're not so different. It's not so black and white. And then it becomes more like, you know, we meld together that way. Yeah, that that come. I I love that statement. We're not so different. Another way yes. to say that is we yes. are at the core the same. Yes. It doesn't yes. appear that doesn't appear that way. We have different education. We have different genders. We have different all kinds of different stuff that appears in the seemingly separate world. All right. But the idea that we're we are the same, and that I, the therapist in this case like everybody else would love to turn back the clock <laughs> and redo a few things in my life. Okay. A few decisions I made, a few things that I did and not just a few. If we think about it, there's a lot of them we'd like to go back and redo. Okay. Yeah. And so we carry around a sort of guilt. That doesn't mean we're dwelling on them every moment of our lives, but it's sticking around in the background. And if we could go back and do that, a lot of peace. Yeah. But we can't go back and redo that. What we can do is go back, and this is where our 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 process, our optimal EFT process and unseen therapist comes in so well. We can go back to those actual events themselves and shift yeah. our emotional response to them. Oh, instead of feeling all guilty about that, I get it. I get it. Everybody does this. Okay. Or something like this. Okay? Right. Right. Everybody has their own version of this. You know, what a wonderful world it would be if we could all go back and take all those events that we felt, you oh, know, we should have done it differently and there's something wrong with us and we behave badly and all that stuff and clean house on that. Would we not automatically start understanding everybody else and their perpetrating activities we would again not excusing it not excusing it understanding it yes yeah a lot of value there i think absolutely absolutely as we, we just we got to look at the long-term approach if this is like you said i'm not there you're not there this is this is a process and and the people listening in, Hella, aren't there either, even though they may oh, want to think. Oh, maybe not. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they may want to think so, but if they think about it a little bit, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't I love to have a little relief on this one, that one, and the other one, you know? Absolutely. Kind of <laughs> okay. Hella, very insightful. I thank you so much. And for those listening in, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I do want to point out that there are some uh, essential links that are below this video including uh, you know how to join our advanced our advanced course if you want that the free ebook that gives you the introduction to the unseen therapist and so on so until next time god bless you all <laughs>